Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Elias and today I'm joined with... Hi, I'm Cindy. And today we're going to give you some book recommendations. No one asked for this, but it's just like a soft spin-off or sequel when we did our first book recommendations video. Um, I think it was like a year ago or two, a couple years ago. Wow, I didn't yeah, know it was that long. No one asked for this, but I need the content and the clout. So here <laughs> we are. Before we get further into the video, I would like to thank today's video sponsor. Cue the clip. I would like to thank today's video sponsor, which is Book of the Month. Coincidentally, we are matching, of course, for AAPI Month. We'd love to see it. They're literally my favorite book service of all time. They essentially vet through hundreds of books every month so that you can spend more time reading and less time researching, essentially doing all the work for you, right? Their main mission essentially is to promote new and emerging authors to help readers discover the books they love. Every month they have a really great skip policy where if you're not really vibing with that particular selection of books, you can totally skip risk-free. Another really cool feature Book of the Month has released are audiobooks. Every month you can choose between an audiobook or a hardcover and all of their audiobooks are accessible through their Book of the Month app, which is really cool because you can listen to an audiobook wherever, whenever. This month I do have a very special code where you can get your first book for only five dollars literally cheaper than a cup of coffee so the first book that i chose for my selection is paper names this one primarily follows three distinct povs over the course of like 30 years it follows these two families who are brought together through an act of unexpected violence and through that they discover themes of familial identity and the american experience and the second book that i got is the thriller the last word this one is really interesting because it primarily follows a young reviewer who leaves a bad review of a book in her own words, her opinion against this debut author and their book. However, the author of this trash, terrible book has also read this review and things sort of dial up to a hundred from here because this reviewer gets stalked and threatened by this author, which is of course every reader's nightmare or fantasy, depending on how you're looking at it. But this does sound very intriguing and I'm very interested to see what happens next. Everything will be linked down below and don't forget to use code FLOWERS to get your first book for only $5. All right, and with that being said, thank you once again at Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video and now back to your regular broadcast. All right, so why don't you go first since you're the guest here. Why? I feel like you should go first because nah, they're, the they're watching for you. It's okay. They're also watching for you as well. I want to note before getting into all my recommendations that I just based these off of what books I could find on Elias's shelf. Super like, random. That's what makes it this super random. This video is honestly just content and cloud. So there's literally no structure <laughs> playing to it. We were like, oh my god, we should totally recommend this book. Yeah, but hey, maybe you'll find a great book that you haven't read yet. Yeah, I'm pretty sure none of these books are recommending that mm. you have never heard from before. So Wait, okay, what's the first book that you can recommend? Because I kind of want to see if I can make mine similar to yours. The first book that I'm going to recommend is All the Light We Cannot See. I read this several years ago. I actually read it in one sitting on an airplane, and I cried <laughs> while I was on that airplane Wait, too. Wait, in one sitting? How long was your flight? Well, the thing is, I can read pretty quickly if all I'm doing is Audio just like commuting. No, no, I read like the, Dang, the full one book. Sitting? Wait, how did this? Because, well, my rate of reading. Oh my God, it's like more than 600 or 500 no. pages. So my rate of reading is 100 pages per hour. Um, and I think the flight was like six or seven hours. I call cap. You know, she's probably like skimming through it, summarizing shit, skimming the pages. Well, okay, whatever skimming I did was enough to make me cry. <laughs> Basically a story that takes place during World War II, hence why there were tears. The main guy is a very precocious kid who kind of like forced to become a Nazi. I don't know, like you, you get to see like- so you cried over a Nazi? No, no, not that. So, okay, the main girl, the main girl is a deaf girl. She is on like the the other side of um, the war. Yeah, wait, hold on, let me see. <laughs> she doesn't even remember. <laughs> see, it's been a while since I read it. Wait, aren't they making this into a movie as well? I thought I heard something like that. Uh, so many things are being you know, made. I got this book such a long time ago, and I still haven't read it. Well, okay. So the point is, we follow two main characters. The main girl is a deaf girl who lives in Paris with her father, but then when the Nazis occupy the land and just become general assholes, they have to flee. And she kind of has to go into hiding and survive on her own. The main guy is a dude who lives in Germany. Are you familiar with like the Hitler youth? Like basically mm -hmm. um, any any young boys that lived back then, they get indoctrinated into yeah. this stuff. And it's basically propaganda they have to follow because it's all they're taught. I liked how 
precocious and thoughtful he was because he questioned a lot of things. So even though he became part of the Hitler Youth, he, he was, was like, like, something mm. ain't right here. <laughs> it takes place over the course of years when you follow them as children to later on. And actually the main characters don't really meet until like way later on in the book. Like I would guess maybe the last 100 pages. Oh so gosh. you really just follow their individual lives. But I loved it because the writing was so beautiful. I think the writing is one of the best writing styles that I have read in like just ever. I felt like the author did a really good job of just telling the whole story. And I feel like, you know, with historical novels, it can be very easy to be dense and slow. But I think since he wrote such short chapters and such impactful writing that it was easy for me to get through. Yeah, I guess since I read it all in one sitting when I was on that plane, I really just felt like everything. Did it back a hardback? A uh, hardback. Wow, that shit really hit you. Heart in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the first book I'm going to recommend to you guys, um, no surprise, if you have been watching my videos on my channel and you know what my favorite books are. And the reason why I'm recommending this book is because this book has a sequel coming out years later. I believe this book first came out in 2013. Wow. Ten years. The author took their well, time. Well, no. Um, so, okay, I'm just going to show you the cover, and it's Vita Nostra by Marina and Ser uh, Sergei Diachenko. The first book was written years ago, and I believe it's completed in you know, like a trilogy, but it's translated from Russian. This was one of the most unique and thought-provoking books I've ever read. I don't actually fully understand on the certain topics and aspects on what this book went over. The basic premise of this book is that this young girl gains admittance to this magical school by doing some really weird tasks for this guy. So she completes these tasks, and when she completes them, a gold coin would um, fill her mouth. And with these gold coins, how she gains entry to the school. And at the school, she slowly meets other people. She sort of transcends beyond her like self being and self awareness into something into something other like godhood. It's really interesting. Like honestly, I felt ten times smarter. It was like you know when you're super high and you like seeing yourself. Yeah. That was what I was feeling when I was reading this book. You were like transcending. Yeah, I was just <laughs> transcending beyond myself. Is it a complete story, even if you just read the first yes. book? Yes. I believe this translates to our life. My next recommendation is going to be a manga because I saw Elias picked a manga for this video too. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do the same. That is Orange Volume 1. I believe there's... Oh wait, no, you have the complete collection. Yeah. This is half of the entire series. This is like a slice of life, some romance, but mostly focused on friendship. And the whole premise is the main girl is someone who often writes in her diary. And one day a transfer student arrives and he becomes integrated into the friend group. She receives a letter from her future self and she can tell that it's actually her writing because her handwriting matches. She doesn't know how the letter got sent to her from the future. I got a future letter from myself. I'm like, this is bullshit. No, no way. I think it's bullshit too. However, the things that the letter was saying that like this would happen, like, you know, when this transfer student arrives, this is gonna happen, this is gonna happen. Like it matched exactly. So like it predicted how her day would go. She knows exactly what's gonna happen on each day. Wait, you haven't read it yet? No. Oh, okay. I haven't even read any of the books that you're recommending. <laughs> wow, okay. The reason why her future self is sending letters to her is because this transfer student that she meets and becomes friends with is going to kill himself in the future. <gasps> and so her future self is writing these letters because she's hoping that her oh, present day gee. self will try to like stop it from happening because oh, she's- I sad. I feel sad already. Yeah, because like her future self is saying like, you know, I wish, I wish we had been there more for him. Like we were there, but like, I wish we had like checked oh in with God. him, you know? Oh, and there's, ooh, oh, wait, okay. So this kind of juicy. Juicy in a sad way. But no spoilers, right? Yeah. Oh, no. And so she blames herself for that. And so, Pira, Pira, stop pulling Cindy's mask. <laughs> yeah. It's sad, but it's sweet too, because, you know, it's Why really- Why is it called orange? Um, I don't know. They have orange hair? No, no, I think, um, <laughs> orange hair. something happened at some point and then she was thinking about like how oranges? it smells like oranges. What the fuck? It, it happened, like, it was some significant moment that happened. So this was also a manga where I cried reading the last few chapters. Oh, gee, no. Speaking of manga, um, actually I read this pretty recent. Deco Bogo Sugar Days. It's basically Heartstopper, but in Japan. It was just really interesting reading about what you go through when you're wondering um, how to have sex for the first time with a person that you 
really like. Also, it's about us. Sure. What I really liked about this, though, is that the main couple, the certain trope, the grumpy and the sunshine trope in here. Mm -hmm. However, I would have thought that the grumpy would have been like the tall dominating guy, right? And the sunshine would be like the short one. Yeah. Okay. That's usually the case. Yeah. However, it's switched in this case. Oh, interesting. The, the shorter guy, I think he's like 5'4". He's super grumpy, pessimistic, like a cat, if you will. Finally, representation for short, grumpy people. And his and his best friends in childhood, I think he's like 6'4". He's like a tall, golden retriever, radiant sunshine. I like that. Yeah, I really like that too. And it was just really, really cute seeing their dual POVs on like how much they liked each other, but they didn't want to re reveal it. If you really like Heartstopper and um, you want to read something similar, then look no further. I believe this is like the first volume in two. There's only two volumes. Oh, so. so short. The next book that I'm going to recommend is a standalone fantasy because we need more standalone fantasies. This is a very simple oh. romance adventure. Just one book. Doesn't need to be a whole trilogy or anything like that. It just scratched the itch for me. It is basically a fantasy romance between a siren and a pirate. Except the pirate is also a prince, but the prince is like, I want to do other shit besides my princely duties. I'm going to be a pirate too. Kind of like Nikolai mm, from okay. the Grisha trilogy. And this is enemies to lovers because in this world, sirens are considered to be dangerous because they can lure you with their siren powers and then kill you. So the main girl is the daughter of the siren queen. They're like being hunted down by humans, but they can also get energy from them or something like that. I read this shit a while ago, but I read it so quickly and it was, um, it just scratched the itch because I really yeah, like adventure stories where two unlikely characters have to go on an adventure together, but they fall in love along the way. Just simple shit. That's my jam. And I think uh, she meets him, but she pretends that she's not a siren. And they have like banter and uh, they fall for each other. I liked their banter. I liked the dialogue. It was just simple and sweet. The next day. I don't know if it's like, I wouldn't describe it as cutesy. I don't know. It's not high stakes, you know? It's. All right, cool. So the next book I'm going to recommend um, that I really liked, and it has still stuck with me to this day, and I read it, like, I think last year for the Late Night Book Club. It is The Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. This book, to me, was so random. It's science fiction, in a way, without all the heavy handiness that... It's not dense. Yeah, um, that sci-fi has to offer. It's, it's much more subtle. In a way, more, I guess, um, speculative which I really like to read in fiction, but everything about it was tied up in a neat little bow because of the writing. The writing in here is so exquisite. Mm -hmm. It's just so like uplifting in a way mm -hmm. where I've never read anything like it in like a science fiction book before. But I really enjoyed the story and the characters overall. Even if I had to describe this book, it's kind of hard because it's so random and weird. It's about these people in different intervals of time where they hear a sound at the same time, at the exact same time. And this sound emits certain frequencies or smells and sights that they feel like they have recognized before. Oh. It's really interesting because, um, you know when you go out some, somewhere Wait, and you it's hear like, smell something? It's like an intense deja vu. Yes. Okay. That's what it is. Okay. Like you're like, A where? sensory deja yeah. vu. Yeah. It's really weird because I've had these instances in my life mm -hmm. where I met, for example, like I was, I went to Vietnamese school and there was this girl just playing on the monkey bars and I was like, oh, your name is Nancy. And she's like, She's like, look at me, like, who the fuck are you? Like, how the <laughs> fuck do you know my name, you creepy ass kid? And I was like, I don't know. Like, I, I literally saw her in my dream. Like, I feel Whoa. like I've never before in like, a past life. So I do believe reincarnation and past lives, they're real. Parallel yeah. worlds are real as well. Multiverses. Is that what the book is about? Like, let's say, it's a type of book where you have to go in blind, um, in a way, because everything about it was just so weird. It wasn't unsettling or anything. It's just... It was just very strange, but in a very beautiful and mesmerizing way. Does it um, follow an ensemble cast of characters? It, or one character? It follows a couple of characters with the central main character. Okay. Like you see the POVs of people who have heard the sound or seen or smelled something, but you follow one certain um, main character. Is it modern day? So it's interesting because it's set in the past, modern future. That's my recommendation for Siege Tranquility. So um, our last batch of recommendations uh, are books that we read very recently that we enjoy. I am going to go with Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. This was the Goodreads Choice 
winner for fiction I've last seen year. I've heard that book everywhere. People have loved it. People have cried over it. Our friend Sarah cried over it. To be fair, I didn't cry over it, Were but I liked emotional? it. Like, can you see why people cry? I can, yeah, I can understand why people cry. Or was cry. Sarah being a sensitive ass bitch? <laughs> I understand why people like this so much. I mean, I didn't rate it a full five stars, but I can understand why other people rated five stars because like I do think- four? Yeah. Okay. I do think it was done well. So the honest, the whole story is about two friends who make a video game together. Like, Yeah, maybe, that's, that's, that's the it. premise I know of that book, and that's pretty much all I want to know. Oh, so I shouldn't say anymore? No, for my sake, she shouldn't say anymore. Okay. But just know that this book is- prolific in every single way. I guess everywhere. People have been hyping the shit out of this. So I mean, I'm very hesitant to read it because the hype is real. Yeah, I feel like you shouldn't get your hopes too high because then I feel like you would go into be like, I didn't cry. You would rate it. it four stars like Cindy. Otherwise, you would cry like Sarah and give it five stars. <laughs> <laughs> the team that marketed this book, they put in their Tamar Russi into this to make sure this book was fucking you know, everywhere. I like the cover, but I do not like the font. Like, I'm not, really? a, I'm not a fan of covers I that have fonts that just cover the entire page. I, I like it. I see the appeal. I feel like it, it would have been better if they had made it much smaller. Mm. And, the, and this, the background oh, yeah. would have been the forefront because it's arresting to the eye, but it's a, very hard to read. Okay. Um, well, just from a graphic design standpoint. This is a book that will be enjoyed by video game lovers, but not just that, by any creative person in general. It's interesting to see like the creative process that comes into these characters making these video games together. But obviously it's more than just video games too. It's about friendship and love, but it doesn't have to be romantic love. Like it's about platonic love too. Oh God! It's just like about life. Like it's- Oh God, please no! A whole life with- No! You know, like you experience- No! It's one of those books where like- no! The characters. Ooh, I like that. I, yeah. That's one of my favorite things to read about in books. They make some good analogies like from video games to real life too. Like how in video games, you always get a second chance at life, but in real life, you don't necessarily, you know, True. have that. Yeah. Cool, I'm very intrigued to read it. All right, speaking of hyped books, the last hyped book that I read, I was very hesitant going in because this book, this book received all the love, all the praise, and everyone and their mother pretty much loved it. Mm -hmm. And I, for one, have really loved it. Because I listened to this book, an audio book, and once I finished it, I was with y'all. It deserves all the hype and all the praise. And this book is, Daisy Jones and Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Mm -hmm. Of course, we, we both agree, the audiobook is sublime. It's like so different than reading it physically because the audiobook enhances that reading experience because they had different people reading the central characters' parts and it's sort of elevated because they were almost voice acting in a way. Usually in audiobooks, you have like one character who voices everything mm -hmm. and they don't voice act in a way, they just narrate. Yeah. But the audiobook, they yeah. said acting. Yeah. It was so fucking good. I really enjoyed the beginning and the middle was really interesting, but I think my overall rating, I guess, was like gonna be three stars and whatnot. However, I just wanna say the last two pages of whatever the audiobook brought it all home and I loved it. Mm -hmm. But my rating, for the show, guys, <laughs> the show is one of the best adaptations I've ever seen in my life. The wow. show brought it home. I feel like the show in some parts was way better than the book, the last half of the show. Dude, you loved the, the show. The show was so good. I got like goosebumps and all you the were, feels. You were getting emotional. I was. I was were like, you about to cry? Um, no. You know really. what? I admit it. I shed one tear. You did? I did. Where? I don't Where? remember when. What episode? Okay. The way the, sh the last episode diverted um, from the original stories, but keeping with all the integral things in, mm -hmm. and just elevating it was just chef's kiss. It was so beautiful. I, I fucking loved it. It was a fucking vibe. Damn. But I, this was so good. I also read this very recently via audiobook. Um, I feel like we both read it to prepare ourselves for um, the, the show. show. Yeah. I will say, though, just to give a different opinion. Well, actually, no. First, I want to emphasize you need to listen to this as an audiobook. Don't read it physically because I read it physically several years ago and I was not impressed at all. I was like, I was evaluating it as a book. Therefore, I was evaluating it on the writing. But this is the kind of story that is not meant to be evaluated by the writing. It's meant to be evaluated like as an audio or visual format. Yes. Because... It's just one of those books. Just reading it with the audiobook, like on a sensory level, was just... It was a whole nother level. Also enjoyed the second half. But yeah, this is like my third Taylor Jenkins Read book so far. Mm -hmm. And I think Evelyn Hugo is still 
the best one for me. Same. But yeah, this has been our random book recommendations video. Let us know down in the comments below if you have checked out or read any of these books and what other book recommendations you guys have for us. So, but yeah, thank you to Cindy for being here and yeah, see y'all soon in a new video. Bye. So much of it was getting in the show. Like, the second half of the show was better represented was because of how the first half, for me personally, was Hook, who's a very important character, the audiobook. I think the author made a lot of emotional about it, but I do think that she...